Good morning. Welcome to Dedicating the Week. Monday morning. Beautiful day. To serve the Lord. Having this wonderful time together like we always do. That's what we do. That's why we have this time in this Dedicating the Week is to love on Jesus and consecrate this week to Him. And we dedicate our week to Him. Our lives are dedicated to Jesus. It's not just a Sunday morning thing. It's not just a Wednesday night thing. It's a lifestyle. It's not religion. It's relationship. We have relationship with the Lord. We have relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Not religion, but relationship. And we dedicate our week to him. We dedicate our life to him, that we may know Jesus, that we may hear his voice more clear today than we ever have before, that we may know him in a way we've never known him before, that we have a touch from the Lord today that we never had before, just so in love with Jesus. He is our daily bread. He is our everything. So let us know where you're watching from. You can comment. Precious people, where you're watching from, comment, good morning from BC, Canada, love, Canada, it's good to see you, amazing, God is so good. So you can comment, like always, let us know where you're watching from. Melissa, it's good to see you. Watching from Greensboro. Amazing. So yeah, we, this is why we have the Dedicating the Week. We dedicate our week to the Lord. He is everything. We don't please man. We're not in it. Our priority is not to please man, but to please the Lord. We are God pleasers. Jerry, Alyssa, woohoo. Blessings from Miami. Amazing. Hallelujah. So let's open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we love you. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. We thank you for this time, this Monday morning, these next few moments we have, Lord. Touch our hearts afresh with your love, with your presence. We love on you, Jesus. We dedicate our week to you. Let it be, like I always say, let it be our best week yet. I thank you, Lord, that your favor is on us that your blessing is on us, increases on us, that you watch over us. You are our good shepherd. You watch over us. You protect us. And just like you said in your word that my sheep hear my voice, thank you, Lord, that we hear your voice loud and clear. Give us strength, Lord. Encourage us. Anoint us this morning with a fresh anointing, with a fresh fire. We come to you Lord, you are the bread from heaven. You are our daily bread. And we come to you. We, we partake of you this morning. You are everything to us. And we love on you. We worship you. We thank you for this Thanksgiving week. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for your word. The word of God is life. Thank you, Lord, for your promises you've spoken over us. And we have faith. We trust in you. You are our foundation. We will not be moved. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. You know, I heard this. I heard this probably about a year ago. And it's so true. This is what I heard. I heard someone share it. Uh, and this is the quote. What you're not thankful for, 
you're in danger of losing. What you and I are not thankful for, we're in danger to losing. It's us being in a place that we're always thankful for the small things, for the big things. Without the Lord, we couldn't get the small things. But having a heart that is always thankful. I don't ever want to be in a place where I'm not thankful, where I'm entitled, where, oh, that, that's just normal. It's just a normal day today. No, you and I have a reason to be thankful. The, just the fact that we're breathing, just the fact that we're here and, and, you, and you feel good and healthy, you have to be thankful. Having a heart that is always thankful. That's how, that's how the Lord is. He is always, when, even when you see his ministry, when he was here in his life, he was always thankful. He never was taking anything for granted or entitled. He was thankful all the time. And we have to have that. Having a heart that is always thankful. And when we get into that place, that place of gratitude, that place of uh thanksgiving when we get to that place it, it will it will cause us it will even increase god will increase and will, and will add more to us as we have that kind of heart amen you know i like this scripture psalms chapter 100 it says make a joyful noise unto the lord all ye lands serve the lord with gladness Come before his presence with thanksgiving. And then verse 3, it says, or verse 4, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. That's literally a place of us getting into the presence of God. The way we access it is us entering with thanksgiving. We, we can go from a place, like when I have my time with the Lord, my prayer time with the Lord, I never... I don't ever ask for anything. I don't have, you know, Psalms chapter 23 talks about the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want. We can get to a place we don't have any wants. We don't have any desires. I, I, and I get to that, that when I'm spending time with the Lord, there's a place where I'm not even asking anything. I'm always just thanking him for everything. And the Lord knows the desires of our heart and he'll bless us. But it's not even about that. It's us having a, uh, a heart of thanksgiving that we are always thankful unto the Lord. How do you get into the presence of the Lord? How do you get into the, it says this, you enter into the gates with what? Thanksgiving. And there's something special when you go from thinking, uh, from asking to just thanking him. When you're, when you're having that heart of thanksgiving, when you're uh, cultivating that up and stirring it up and just reminding the Lord, Lord, thank you for this. And just, it's, it, that's, you're really in faith. And it, it, it's, doing, it's doing something. You, even if you need a, um, there's things you know that if you need a breakthrough or whatever, you could just say, Lord, instead of asking, Lord, I thank you for it. You already have asked in prayer. You have, you've already put you know, your faith on it, and you go from asking now to thinking, thanking him for it. That's what, that's, what, that's what faith does. You go from asking to thanking. Us having this mindset to always be thankful, having a heart thankful unto the Lord. What you're not thankful for, you're in danger of losing. Without him, man, we couldn't do anything. We wouldn't have anything. Your flesh will, you know, you'll get something or whatever, and you want more, want more, but it's just stopping over the simple things, the small things. Just the fact that we're here right now, just the fact that you're watching him on your cell phone or your computer, it's because you've got, you've increased, you've had, God's blessed you and you were able to purchase that device. That's not, not everyone has that device. What? Just remind yourself, being thankful, stirring up a heart of thanksgiving. 
Hallelujah. Every day I always think about what the Lord has done for me and even words that have been spoken over my life. And and I just I just remind the Lord and I just I just have I just start talking about it and I just I'm so thankful to the Lord. That's what faith is. When you're truly in faith, when you truly believe what God has said about you is gonna come forth or the dreams and desires he has for you. You won't be discouraged, but you'll have a thankful heart. You won't say, I don't think so. It's not going to work out. Maybe God doesn't love me. No. You remind yourself. You're thankful. And you say, Lord, I thank you, Lord. I am loved by you. You are moving on my behalf. That's a place of faith. You being a thanksgiving, you being thankful is, you, is a place of faith. Where you know you're so in love with the Lord and you know He's working on you and I's behalf. Thanksgiving's coming up. It's on Thursday. But it shouldn't just be a once a year thing. It should be every day that we have a heart that is thankful unto the Lord. And when you feel the most, you could say, when you feel the most discouraged or confused, that's when you need to put be extra thankful for everything. And just say, devil, you are a liar. And just remind the devil how thankful you are for everything the Lord has done for you. And it will increase you. You'll be more blessed. You'll go from a place of being discouraged to a place of victory and always happy. You know, there's a story, Smith Wigglesworth. And uh, actually, Lester Sumrall was hanging out with Smith Wigglesworth. So he goes to his, Lester Sumrall goes to Smith Wigglesworth's house knocks on the door, the door opens, there's Smith sitting there. Here is this man of God, you know, and Lester Summerall's looking at him. Lester Summerall's probably thinking, what should I say to him? So he said, Let, he goes, uh, Smith, how, how are you feeling this morning? That's what he said. Smith Wigglesworth looked at Lester and said this, I never ask myself how I feel. I tell myself how I feel. What's he saying? Even he might not feel thankful. He might not feel excited, but he doesn't ask his little flesh, how do you feel this morning? Did you, did you like getting up this morning? Are you excited? It's Monday and you got work all week. He's saying, no, I never ask my body how I feel. I tell my body how I feel. What's he going to tell his body? You are blessed. You're thankful. You have joy. The Lord is your shepherd. Us having being always thankful and all us stirring ourselves up and always being so I, I heard this the other day I was praying and I heard this out of my spirit be focused on me this is what I heard be focused on me and be enamored by the holy one that's what I heard be focused on me and enamored by the holy one that word enamored I didn't even know what it meant I looked it up. If you break it down, this is what it means. Being fascinated by me. So the Lord was saying, be focused on me. It's not just for me he's telling this. He's telling for all of us, you watching. He's saying to all of us, be focused on me and be enamored by the Holy One. Be fascinated by me. So I've just been thinking about that, meditating on that. And the more I'm focused on him, the more enamored I am on him, the more thankful I am. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the Lord. He's everything to me. He is my priority. He is my foundation. I can go to the Lord when I don't feel like anyone else, you know, as you can say, you can feel like you're by yourself, but you go to the Lord and you just tell him how you feel and you just start reminding yourself what he's done for you. He'll give you joy. He'll give you a fresh touch from heaven. He'll give you that oil of intimacy and you just slide through life and you always have joy. Why? Because you know you're, you're God's son. You know you're God's daughter and you're loved by the master. Yes, Michael. And I believe the healing power of God touching you. COVID has no place towards your body. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. All throughout the day, all throughout this week, not just this whole week, a lifestyle of being thankful, 
you have sons, you have daughters, you have grandkids, always just spending time and just thanking the Lord for them. Hallelujah. You know, I heard this story. It was actually my dad. He told me this story. This was years ago. And he, and it just always, I've always thought of it and I never forgot it. And he said, Brandon, you know, when I was first married to your mom, we were believing God for everything. And he said, we got, I was believing God for a recliner, a recliner chair. And he said, we got it. And he said, it was, it was perfect. It was beautiful. Thing is though, I had like one little like spot on it or a hole. But he said, man, at that time I was just so thankful for that chair he said, the first thing I did is I sat in the chair. I raised up my hands and I said, Lord, I thank you for this chair. I just want to tell you, it's not even about the chair. It, it is, it's not about physical stuff. It's not about, yeah, that stuff's great and it gives us joy, but it's, that's nothing. He's everything. We get our mind, we got to get our mindset off. It's not just about the stuff. He'll give us the stuff. All, it's just tools, stuff for us to enjoy, but it's all about him. It's all about him. So he, he's raising his hands up, saying, Lord, I, I thank you for this chair, but it's all about you. Lord, I love you. I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for you. I love on you, Jesus. And he was doing this for quite a while. And he said, I said this. I said, Lord, it probably gets... You know, we can talk to the Lord. He's, he's our Father. We can, we can talk to Him. We don't have to have just these religious prayers that we always say all the time. We can have fellowship and talk to Him. So he said this. He said, Lord, it probably gets old that you hear a lot of people thanking you all the time for everything. You probably hear that all the time. You know, you think about it. Millions and billions of people on earth. And he said, you, my dad said this out loud to the Lord. Maybe it probably gets old to you hearing everyone say and thank you all the time to you. And he wasn't expecting to hear anything. He just said it. And he told me, he said, Brandon, I heard the audible voice of God. I only heard it twice. He said, I heard it. This is what I heard. He said, I heard the Lord say this. It's not as common as you think. What? That's all I heard. So my dad was saying, Lord, you probably, it probably gets old. You hear people all the time telling you thank you for everything. And then he hears the Lord say this. It's not as common as you think. Whoa. A lot of people are asking for things. A lot of people are consecrated love Jesus, but when they get super blessed, they get busy, they get everything that they wanted, they are not as thankful. That's not me. I will thank him for everything. It's very common, you know, when I, when I was in that, living in that small trailer, living here in Southern California, I, I was spending quite a bit of time just in the word praying and I was hearing stories of men and women of God who were in my si same situation before God now using them people all know their name but they talked about in their early days of ministry they were seeking God for direction spending time with the Lord just uh in his word hours a day praying and they talked about uh, now that they've gotten busy, gotten well-known, they've neglected that time. Maybe not even being as thankful as they were before. Now they have such increase. They're known. Everything they believe God for back then, now they're experiencing it. And they've neglected. They're not in that place with the Lord that they were before. And I, when I heard that, I made, it, I made a decision. I said, Lord... The way you want to use me, I don't, if it, you know, being well known, whatever, but I'll never, I'll never neglect this time with you. I'll never say, oh, back then I was more thankful or back then when I had nothing, I, I spent time with the Lord and now I'm busy and I'm doing everything else. No, he is our priority. 
He is everything. I made it my motto. I will not get to a place where I'm not thankful. Get to a place where I stop spending time with him the same amount that I used to or whatever. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you. We treasure you. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you. We honor you. We honor you. Just right now, wherever you are, just raise up your hands. Put your eyes on Jesus these next couple minutes. Put your eyes on Jesus. I, I just hear this in my spirit, just like he told me the other day. Be focused on me. That's what the Lord's telling you right now. Be focused on me. Be focused on me. So, Lord, we are focused on you. We're focused on you, King Jesus. Jesus was focused on his father. It says that Jesus set his eyes on his father and he set his eyes on him like a flint. He would not be moved. He would not be shaken. His life was threatened. He would preach the gospel and then they wanted to kill him. He, Jesus was not man pleaser. He was a God pleaser. He always pleased to please his father. What? His focus was on his father. Lord, let our focus be on you. Let our focus be on you. So just look to his face right now. Put your focus on him. We are so thankful for you. We're so thankful for you. Sweet Holy Spirit, touch our hearts afresh that we hear your voice. Comfort us. You are the great comforter. You are the great comforter. Joy. Stop taking yourself so seriously. Put your eyes on him. Put your eyes on Jesus. Be focused on him. Be enamored by him. Be fascinated by him. Be fascinated by Jesus. Be focused on him, enamored by the Holy One. So, Lord, we do that this morning. We do that this week. And the more focused we are on you, the more enamored we are on you, the more thankful we are to you. We are thankful that we stir up our hearts to have hearts of thanksgiving. We are thankful to you, Jesus. And we love on you. We love on you. We let our light shine. The darker it is, the brighter we shine. The darkness is not the problem. It's the absence of light. We are children of light. Darkness does not overcome the light. We are carriers of light. We are carriers of glory. We will let our light shine in Jesus' name. I pray that this week, people watching right now, that they will have encounters will people where people will see the light of Jesus shine. And people will be affected, even our family members, as we're having this time of Thanksgiving, as we're with our family and fellowshipping. Let our light shine in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You know, yesterday, after church, Destiny and I, we went to uh, this event. We just kind of felt led to go. And it's this event where there's a lot of uh, canopies, or you could say tents, and people are, uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of young people, and they're selling um, 
all types of stuff, but mostly like old t-shirts. That's kind of like the thing. I, I, it's like a hobby of mine. I like to collect old t-shirts. So we went and we're, we went to this guy's uh, booth there. You could call it a booth. And we're just talking to him. And I, I wasn't talking to him about Jesus. I was just being there. But, you know, for your light to shine, you don't have to just be talking about Jesus. You're a carrier of the light. So he's, he could tell something was different. So he's, he starts asking me questions. And long story short, he, we ended up, um, I bought a t-shirt from him. And then he messaged me on Instagram. And he was just saying, I need God. I need a touch from Jesus. And, I, and he wants to hear me minister. What was it? Jesus letting our, our light shine. He was affected by the light. People need what you and I have. People need what you and I have, what you and I have. We are carriers of that light. As we're focused on Jesus, as we're thankful for him, we're fascinated by him. Whoa, everything else lines up. I love my wife. I love her with all my heart. I really do. I love my daughter with all my heart. But I'm so focused on the Lord. I'm so enamored by him. I'm so fascinated by him. He's my joy. Man, he's my everything. He's my everything. He's everything to me. I spend a lot of time with the Lord. I'm so thankful. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so in love with Jesus. I told that guy who was messaging me, and I said, it's not about religion, it's about relationship. Jesus wants a relationship with you, and he loves you. Man, the love of Jesus, his love, nothing can, nothing can compare to the love of Jesus. What, he, he is love, and man, that love, wow, it's, ev- it's everything. It's everything. Glory, glory, glory. I want us to turn to Ephesians. It's our scripture. We always pray. Paul prayed it to the church at Ephesus. I can sense the presence of the Lord. So he prays this for us. John G. Lake, powerful man of God, he said this. He said, in his opinion, the most powerful books in the Bible are Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 2. So Paul prayed this. He's praying this for us right now. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, they may know the hope of his calling. What the riches of the glory of his inheritance that's in the saints. What is the exceeding greatness of God's power to us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead, and set him at his own right hand, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might, dominion, every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And to put all things under his feet. And gave him behead over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Isn't that amazing? So think about it. the Lord, he's given unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the knowledge of him, that our eyes, that we may be enlightened, guys, that we may, we may know what to do. The riches of God's glory, of his presence, you and I are carriers of glory and the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. The passion says that we are an advertisement of God's mighty power. We can go from a place of praying from like this, Lord, help me. Thank you for giving me power. I uh, pray, Lord, that you do give me power. Just help me. We can go from prayers like that to prayers like this. Lord, I am an advertisement of your power. Lord, I thank you that you are working through me, flowing through me. And devil, demons, you listen up. You are defeated. The power of God lives in me. I am a carrier of God's glory. I have perfect peace. I have a sound mind. I know what to do. 
We're not victims, but we're victors through Christ. We have the victory. I sure hope so, Brandon. I hope we have the victory. I mean, I'm trying and feel like I don't have the victory. You have the victory because what Jesus did for you. I'm trying not to have fear. You know, I just, I have all this uncertainty. You have the victory. Walk in faith. Know what the word of God says. I, I, I'm praying for, you know, that glory. You and I are carriers of the glory. It says that. Paul said the riches of God's glory, of his inheritance, is in you and I. Talk about inheritance. We have an inheritance that's more valuable than money. Nothing can compare. We have the riches of God's glory. He's inside of us. That's our inheritance. Chapter 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That word quickened means made alive. Verse 4. That's what happened. Adam sinned. We were, we, were, we were dead. But when Jesus came, lived that holy life for us, separated, our substitute of sins, died on the cross, raised from the dead. It says when that happened, we were quickened. We were made alive with Jesus. Verse 4, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loves us. You are loved by the Lord. You're loved by the Heavenly Father. You know Jesus you know Jesus' love for you, but think about God. He loves you. Tap into that. You are loved by God. He loves you so much. His great love, where he loves us. Even when we're dead in sins, he's quickened us together with Christ. Raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's a place of victory. That's a place of authority. That's a place of breakthrough. That's a place of peace. That's a place of freedom. That's a place of perfect shalom, wholeness. We are seated in heavenly places in Christ. We rule and reign over you, Satan, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for the place of authority, the place of victory that we have. We will not be shaken. We will not be moved. We rule and reign over California over America, you have no place towards us. We take our authority over you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Place a breakthrough, place of victory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for that. We are focused on you, enamored by you. Stir our hearts to be thankful this week. Not just this week, but our whole lifestyle. Always be thankful. That's how we enter into your presence with a thanksgiving, with a thankful heart. Amen. If you enjoyed that message, like always, comment your favorite emoji. If the Lord spoke to you, you can write that down. Karen, hallelujah, we have a victory in him. Joint heir, that's right. Thankful for the glory, amen. Karen, thank you last week for sowing that seed. Call forth a hundredfold blessings on you. I also put another uh, giving there, a link. If you feel led to sow into us, you can do that as well. Fire up. Amen. I even believe mir healings and miracles have taken place right now. Maybe you want people watching right now on the live, but even on the replay. 
I believe, whatever your, if there's a pain in your body, if you check it, I believe in the name of Jesus, you are healed. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. So before I head out here, just raise your hands right now to the Lord. Lord, touch your people. Touch your people. We love on you, Jesus. We love on you. Sweet Holy Spirit. Just like you said in your word, Paul said that the communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That's what the last things he said to the church at Corinth. That the fellowship, the Holy Spirit be with you. Praise you, Jesus. Yeah. Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. This is the last thing he said to the church at Corinth, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. I put in my Bible here, fellowship, communion, presence, sharing together, participate with, participate with the Holy Spirit, friendship of the Holy Spirit. So Lord, we thank you for this week that we have that communion, that fellowship with you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen. Thank you so much for watching, dedicating the week. Pray God's blessings on you. Enjoy your time with your family. And Thanksgiving is not just an American holiday. It, it's every day should be Thanksgiving. It's us being thankful for what the Lord has done in our lives. It's us being thankful that God is using us, that we have a good father. It's not just an American thing. Or it's, it's, it's all of us. We celebrate together. So maybe on Thursday, maybe if you're from a different country, maybe you don't celebrate Thanksgiving. I want to encourage you. Have a meal. Have a time together with your family and give thanks to the Lord. Because that's what it's all about. That's why we have Thanksgiving. It's not to thank people. It's to thank God the Lord for what he's done in our life. Every day should be a Thanksgiving. I want to encourage you, always be thankful to the Lord.